pulled out of that at the brain changes things that are amazing. I, that, that, that's bad. so the key. <laughs> like remote troubleshooting without anybody on site. Do a quick changes to the reloading five or three. Try the chain, see if it works. Thirty like that's usually like how we box. do DB tests. Right. Reboot right. itself and come right back up to where it was before. Is there like a awesome. limit to how much you can put in that NVRAM? Yeah, there, it's got a size limitation on it. So like. Um, We've had problems, well, like, I think it's come up more with Flash, like when you're trying to um, upgrade an iOS without, like, removing the iOS that's on there already. Depending on how much room you have in Flash, you might not be able to load the new iOS without deleting the one that's on there. And so that gets, it gets pretty tricky because you can't reboot the box until you get that new, like, say you, you know, you try to load a, you try to load a new iOS, you realize you don't have enough room to put it on there with the other one. So... You have to delete the one that's existing in there first. At that point, you absolutely must get the one that you're trying to load loaded back in there, or to get something loaded back in there, because you don't have any kind of it, depending. Be like trying to flash your PC BIOS. Yeah. Use power. Exactly. Like all of it. I'll send you PC. I've heard I've heard plenty of flash drives in my life. PSP is mostly. Like I think a lot, a lot of times on the newer routers, the um, they've actually got enough uh, memory that that's not a problem for the most part. But if you're working on older equipment where you know the the amount of memory in flash is really limited, uh, you absolutely can do some damage if you aren't really careful with that. If you're if you're having to load an iOS that you don't have room for, so. Yeah, I was flashing my PSP. They're really power sensitive. Like if you go from like power outlet to battery power. Mm -hmm. While you're updating your flash, it's gone. And done. <laughs> yeah, same same thing here. You're basically yeah. looking at a, you know, that after that the box might be able to uh, load into Rammon, and the the process, especially remotely, of trying to get get a new iOS in there, like it's it's not a big problem if you've got the box right in front of you, you got hands on, you can do stuff with it. But if you're you're working on a site that's remote and you're remotely logged into that router, man, if you screw that process up, especially on the iOS part. Oof, you're, you're going to have a lot of trouble. It's more than likely going to be a, a router shipment. So are there any major differences between like the NVRAM and the flash? I mean, other than what they store? Um, it's, it's just the two different... It no, uh, like the on the newer routers, the flash is actually a CF disk. And the NVRAM is actually on the router itself. Yeah. So it, you can upgrade flash memory relatively easily. Yeah. It depends on like the model, like um, yeah, like yeah. It, that's kind of nice, like because you can just ones are all on yeah. board. You can just the, pop the cards out or whatever, and if you you end up getting a problem with just that particular piece of memory, you can swap it out. But NVRAM, I think, is pretty much always like located yeah, like physically on, on the board, board like, of the box. Like so. that router is going to have NVRAM. If you do a Cisco 1841, it's going to have a PCMCIA flash card with iOS on it that you can. Yeah, it's it just going to be like an old style CF yeah. memory card. <laughs> Like what they used to have in like cameras, and actually you couldn't even use those if you format it. That seems easy enough. Whenever you know, because the flash card just get a new card in there. But you have to be careful because it will normally only support up to a certain amount, over a certain amount, and it won't even recognize the disk. And you'll see that there's something in there, but it won't do anything with it. Okay, so we got a, um, a pretty good foundation on the four types of memory components. Um, this is going to be something you should pretty well know. Like, it, it has a lot of implications. Like, as we've already talked about some specific examples, it's got a lot of implications, especially when you're, like, trying to upgrade, I upgrade iOS, do configuration changes, TFTP configurations into the box. Knowing, you know, where all this stuff is located and how it's going to impact what's going on is, is pretty, pretty key. Um, and then on the, the Cisco Internetworking Operating System, the iOS itself, um, the, you should at least have like some kind of knowledge of the way that the naming convention works. I believe that I did have some specific questions on my CCNA exam that um, corresponded to this. So the, uh, the release trains are the iOS versions, it's just the, the word that um, Cisco uses to describe them. The train identifiers um, will be a, usually a single or a couple letters, uh, T for technology, E for enterprise, SP for service provider. There's a couple of other ones out there. Um, so like in this example for the iOS, you got you know, 12.3, one uh, T. So 12.3 is the mainline train number, the main release of that. Uh, one is the 
the sub release, I guess the like an updated version. Like think of it as you know getting downloading like 3.0 to 3.1 of a, a piece of software. Um, I guess you you kind of have that in 12.30, but one is like the the sub edit of that, and then the the T is the train identifier in this case standing for technology. So you know version 12.3 release one uh, technology. And then uh, feature sets is also kind of important. Um, you'll have iOS uh, image file naming in something like this. It'll, you know, c2600-ipbase-1.122.1.t.bin. Uh, one 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 now it's it's a it's kind of a mouthful, but it's it's really just having an idea of like what each part of it corresponds to. So in this case, the beginning, you know, starting from the the front. C2600 is the hardware platform, so you know th this particular iOS corresponds to the 2600 series of routers. Like if you try to put it on an 800 series, it, it's not going to work. Um, IP base is the feature set, so uh, Cisco releases these different versions that have different sets of commands. Um, so like you know one feature set might not have all of the functionality that another feature set have. It might you know one might have the ability to set up IPsec, another one. Uh, may not have like the the capability for the the crypto commands, so that's that's what that feature set identifies. Um, one is the the file format. Uh, One twenty two is the iOS version number. Um, the the la the second one is the maintenance release number, and T is the train identifier. Um, most are like the questions that I remember kind of seeing on on there. Um, like you don't really have to have like super memorized this format or how they're doing it like most of the questions that I would get would they would list like a an iOS version or something you know a really long iOS version and they would ask you like you know what does the T stand for um, and you know you, you would have options of like what what was list you know five or six options for that so like they might give you exactly this one here and you'd have to identify that T stands for technology or if it was an SP that SP stands for service provider uh, but it's it's multiple choice, so those, those questions weren't terribly difficult. And I don't even know that I got more than one of those uh, questions on the actual exam. And then uh, the last, I'm, I'm just going to barely touch on this. Um, the last part of this chapter touches on a lot of various uh, Cisco router models and features and Cisco switch models and features. I'm not going to go in depth on that. If like you guys, you guys should read over it so that you've seen it. Cisco, like the way they do their exams, it's almost like a sales presentation at the same time. So like they they show it to you for two reasons. One is they want you to be familiar with like what the latest and greatest um, you know Cisco routers are, and you know two like if you're gonna if you're gonna end up working for a customer later, they they want you to recommend Cisco routers as their you know preferred equipment as well. But like you're not, it's very, very unlikely, pretty much, almost completely unlikely that you're you're gonna get any questions on the actual exam related to specific Cisco router models or switches because the stuff is updating so fast. They're coming out with new stuff, um, and it, it changes so frequently that it's they're gonna ask you more general questions about the the iOS and you know configuring routers and that kind of thing rather than like jump into well you know what does an 831 feature set have blah blah. blah. You're not gonna get a question like that. So. I would say read over those pages just so you you've seen them and you know what you know what they're talking about. But the chances of you getting a, a question on the exam um, regarding like one of those routers or switches is really really unlikely. So I wouldn't sweat that when you're preparing for the actual uh, taking of the test. And that's all I've got um, for chapter six. Um, any questions on that before I jump into seven?